So today I'm going to be trying to build a ramp transition between the two different hardwood floors that I have. So hopefully my robot vacuum can traverse between them by itself. Because right now it's just a little bit too much of a bump over. It's like almost an inch between the two for it to get over by itself. So hopefully with a little ramp it'll be able to get up there and I won't have to bring it anywhere. Because that's kind of the point of getting it is to make sure it can do everything by itself. As you can see there, it's just a little bit too much for it to get over. It can get over some pretty substantial flooring. You know, like anything that's half an inch can go over pretty easy. I have some uh, bricks over here that it can climb down, up and down just fine. So you can see it goes up and down with those bricks just fine. And I mean, those probably got a good half inch width on them. So let's see if we can't pull the little ramp so I can get up and down the hardwood floors too. Alright, let's get started. So for the ramp, I'm going to be using some of this hickory hardwood flooring that I have laying around from another job that I did, uh, which is nice. I don't have to go out and buy any flooring for this since I have these pieces laying around. Um, it won't match the existing flooring, but I'm not too concerned about that. And I'm just going to be cutting it at about a 10 degree angle and then just making sure that I have the groove side face down so it can be pushed into the existing floor that's there. And that should make a nice easy step up for the, uh, the robot vacuum. And then I'm just using a scrap piece of plywood that I have laying around three quarter inch to set the, uh, the spacing for the bottom of the hardwood. So I know that I'll have a complete piece at the bottom without interfer interfering with the, the groove at all when cutting it. So with the 10 degrees, it doesn't cut all the way through the three quarter inch flooring. So it is gonna take uh, another cut in order to get that ramp. Um, the reason for that is I don't want it to be like a perfect wedge. I do want there to be a little bit still of a lip at the end of it. Just cause if it was a complete wedge that, you know, went down to, you know, a 32nd of an inch, the end of it would break off way too easily. Where this way, if you know, I leave a little, probably a little over an eighth of an inch at the bottom of the ramp, it should still be able to hold up quite well to, you know, normal foot traffic and my dogs. I'm just going to slip her back to zero. And now, this. So the second cut is I'm going to be making it at two and five eighths of an inch. That's how long the ramp's going to be.
All right, so there's one finished piece of the ramp. So all I also have to do is cut the rest of them and then sand them all down and uh, put some poly on them for protection. So battery died last night while I was sanding, but basically all I have done is I got them all sanded down to 220 and then just started coating them in some poly. So you can kind of see what the end result is here. I got about three coats on them. You can see they don't have like a, a sharp edge on them because if you do that, it's going to wind up breaking off and splintering. So I left about probably about a quarter inch still on there. So I think I'm going to put one more coat on them before we go ahead and uh, nail them down in. Let's give those a couple hours to dry and then we'll go ahead and get them installed. Alrighty, so I've had the finish ramps installed for a few weeks now and they've been working flawlessly. I mean, I haven't had any problem with them with the robot ramp going up and down or with them breaking or chipping off at the edges. So I would say this project was a great success and I mean, the robot ramp so much more useful because now I don't have to bring it, you know, from the lower floor up to the upper floor. 